through already into a PCS qualifying match. As for Ion, they need to run it back now on the blue side, which they elected for to bring it to that game three. Otherwise, they'll drop that into the lower bracket and they'll have a rematch up against the Direwolves. Yeah, and while this is going to be a, a lot more of a stable early game, there still is that level one advantage for the ground zero side. Bully Bear is a really, really strong top side champ. If they do want to invade onto that blue buff, level one, Carth this Volley Bear will win that 2v2 against the Renekton Zyra, but if there's going to be that bot side invade, could be a bit more, you know, of an even trade, but I'm still going to give it to the Carthus again, and is this going to be another invade coming out of Ground Zero because they're playing so aggressive all over the map right now. So aggressive and not grouped up, that's the big tell, right? It's the fact that they are fanned out as five, but they're not afraid whatsoever. They really are saying, what are you going to do? Like, we're in your face. I doubt you're going to make anything happen as a result of this one. Kyrick just standing his ground. And, uh, and Linus then forced to uh, respond. But look, we like this from Iron this time around. They've actually got the protection, they've got the scouting, they've got the insight to make sure that Coley shouldn't have the same fate as game one. Yeah, and this might just be that flip level one. Shenfire does spawn him on the chickens, but he's going to run back to his own blue buff. So deciding not to go for that invade, they just want to do a bit of scouting, make sure they know where he starts. Going to be that chicken start, so he recognizes where he is. He's going to know that this camp will be the first two respawn from the enemy. So if this is that full clear, might be able to find out that, that respawn after the, gra the crab and pick himself up an extra camp. Well, let's see then how life does fare out for these uh, top laners. No doubt, uh, both got a bit of uh, healing built into their kit and the push is certainly going to be able to favor that of the Volley Bear with that passive lightning. Uh, and that really was the story of all of game one, right? Doraemon stuck underneath his tower. You can't really afford to have that same fate as a Renekton. You want to be aggressive. You want to be linking up and give it a chance to try and roam elsewhere. Yeah, and we do see the Q start coming out of the Volley Bear, Skimmy, so not something usually you see out of the Volley Bear. You usually see the, the E or the W just as you do have the extra bit of training power in the early game, but head up with the Presti attack, that's a, that is an auto reset, so he can afford himself that reset, but what a nice engage from Kurak, proccing the passive from the Kai- Oh, actually not proccing the passive from the Kai, so a called auto cancel from Lemus there. Would have been a lot of damage going over the stick stand, it could have been a potential dive angle for them. And given how low he is even without that extra auto, uh, it's a bit of a grim tale, but I tell you what, Jovi really is on one today, isn't he? Doesn't matter what the matchup is, says, look, I'll show you how to navigate it from the Corky side. And he's already put Fido dangerously down low, chugging through the potion. It's going to slice up that Phosphorus Bomb and not fall low. Oh, oh. hey, on a minute, is he going to die to tower? He's dead. Wow, I do not believe it. That's such a huge blunder. And it just shows you just how slim these margins are. Congrats. Big first blood there for Grand Zero. We do see Shonfire going for the invade though. Coley is on the side, but at the end, can find him out with that flash. He certainly can. He turns it around. Flash to be burnt. Flash to follow and Shonfire lays waste to him, as well as that camp to deny that blue buff one more time. Jovi in with a fresh reset with that TP says, I'll be yoinking that. Thank you so much for the double buff uh, transfer. And mid lane is saved. Thank you, base Shonfire, for saving the uh, mid lane for Ion. Going to be able to get back into the lane with the blue buff there. Oh, nicely done there by Kyrick, who tried to be a little bit cute and clever to try and turn it back onto Sticks despite him being passed huh? upon initially. It seems as if actually Iron is showing a bit of restraint here as they will jump in again. And make sure that this Leona, you know, continues to be as tanky as she is, but you're wondering how Kyrick's gotten away with that one. What, excuse me, what did I just watch? I just saw a, like a 200 health Leona running at a full health uh, rel, forcing him to flash away. Kyrick doing a bit of staunching and there is the jungler from Island coming to the bot side, but Shun is reacting himself, so Coley with no flash could be caught out here. Nice hex flash to get away to safety, it seems, as there is the deadly flourish to lock him in place with a nice little root, and then Lima snipes him away with that Void Seeker. Sticks thinks we should have got this kill, boys. How's it gone so against us as the explosive shot gets planted on his head? It's not going to be lethal, it's going to be dangerously low. He flashes forward, oh, but Sticks no. can't find it. The deadly flourish was such a long cast time. And this is a disaster in the first four minutes. This is an absolute disaster. And this is what we thought we would see coming out of that game one performance from Ground Zero. They have a lot more priority this game. They have a lot more volatility, a lot more, uh, you know, aggression. Thanks to Leona, thanks to the Tristan in the mid lane. So Ground Zero, this team who is so good at mid game, so good at macro, completely taking over the early game because they really create this volatility that uh, Ion on the Zara does not want to be dissipating in. No, I mean, it all starts off beautifully done there by Limis. Once again, Kira continues to bait. Doesn't matter what his HP is. It's just a sign that we need to go in. And in the response, the rotate, just a little bit better from Grand Zero. And they get to pick up literally everything. And we speak about Kira being deployed. He knows no bounds. He's always in a position to shine. 
pretty much any time you don't need to be bot lane as a support, you never be bot lane, right? The only time you really want to be in lane is the absorb experience plus, uh, you know, make sure your AD carry doesn't get dope. But the rest of the time, you want to be running around the map. You want to be attacking, you want to be ganking, you want to be participating as the second jungler. But we're seeing aggression onto the top side. The flash going down means next time Tien can find the solo kill, especially when he has access to that ult and can disable the tower. Yeah, that Thundercloud's a little bit too scary and Dorimon taking no chances whatsoever. This makes it very scary as a whole for the entirety of Ion because now nobody has a flash. It makes it so easy for these ganks to work against them. And that's exactly what Shunfire's hunting for right now. He's not level six, but that wall of pain will just simply be enough. Minion. Slice and dice is your only get out of jail free card. And as he jumps in for the one slice, the dice into the Dominus. That might be enough of an HP buff for the say there's no kill threat anymore. The layway's just out of range. Oh, oh. drop a nuke on his head with a Stormbringer. <laughs> it actually goes against him. Somehow, Tien falls away. And Duramon says, I can bait these fights out just as well as you can. A fight also taking place bot lane in a straight 2v2. And then Dorimon says, I want to get something. And that he certainly does. What a play from Dorimon. I did mention he was one minion away from that six, got the Dominus, kites that one out perfectly, dodges the skittles as well. It's just the one thing you can do to outplay that card because, you know, a lot of his damage can be avoided. So Coley does rock up, counter gangs, picks himself up the kill, and now, you know, there is that bridge in the early game that they have been able to band-aid eye on the back in it, Skimmy. That they certainly are, and whilst we look at the spot lane and two supports are saying, look, I'm in a bush, you're in a bush. Look at us, we're both trying to go back to base, but neither us will let that happen. So both Eddie carries come back in, and I think all things considered, you know, Stick's done a pretty good job actually to be down two deaths, but still be ahead in CS. Yeah, this is just really thanks to what the wave state was like, but we will go into that 2v2 and see. More than likely, this was the aggression coming out of ground zero, but with the minion wave, uh, with the fact that all the CC lands onto Lemus, there is going to be that trade coming out, and you would always favor the carry, uh, you know, getting that trade, especially the fact that Lemus was the one to pick up the kill there and not sticks. Yeah, another kill going away for Hexplash. Unfortunately, it does mean that the Kairos is going to be just a fraction more accelerated if given the chance. Once again, down comes the Thundercloud, gets that shield and makes sure that Doraemon is forced to back underneath that tower to safety, and it just gives all this freedom again for Grand Zoo to play their style. They've done all split long. Let me go topside, let me grab these grubs, and it's just business as usual. Yep, and just creating volatility all over the map while letting Shown Fire to just, you know, full clear, invade with the priority that they create through these individual leads, using that Requiem to find any ults on the side. If Lemus does want to go for that killer instinct, there is no barrier onto Sticks, so that would have potentially been a kill angle with the Requiem there, but. The ult coming out, skinny, bit of poke. Not gonna yeah. be able to find sticks there, so not really sure what that one was. Maybe a bit of a base cancel, creating some tempo. Not such a bad idea, because he's gonna miss a lot of experience Ooh. at the end. Well, maybe it's just worked out more ways than one, because you'd have thought initially it was gonna be a kill towards the bot side, finds it in the top onto Dorimon, then they use that as a sign to be aggressive and actually bully Iron completely out of the river and say, if you want your strong win condition of the dragon, it's just not gonna happen. Skimmy, I've just clocked the inventory. I see Merc Treads on Kali. <laughs> They're in his head. They're really in his head with the amount of aggression going on to him. He's sick of being caught out of this. He's sick of being locked up in CC. So a champ like Zyre, who is so reliant on, you know, percent penetration or flat penetration, because Zyra's damage does not rely upon, you know, uh, you know, big AP items. But the aggression coming out from Doraemon responded in tandem with the, you know, Requiem and the fact that Tien it's just such a strong champ on the volley there with the flash advantage that he has, finds that easy kill. Yeah, look at that shield and the chomp though. Actually the difference maker there, literally GCD perfect. You love to see it. Out comes the cleanse, the strangle form's being flashed out of. But where do you go now, Linus? Left, right, good night, not to be found. And he concedes it by going for the minion wave instead. That really feels bad. They certainly needed that one. And they might still find it. As a deadly flourish lands and the sticks gets the killing blow this time. Underneath the tail though, Shunfire stands and he delivers and takes down Hex Flash in due process. More kill trades being in favor of Ion though. So, you know, that kill does go towards Sticks this time. And I think that really important thing to mention though, Skimmy, is the fact that both solo AP members from each team in the Carthus and the Zyra, we look at the inventories. This is going to be a complete item for Shonfire on that base. Whereas, you know, look at Collie's Merc treads and components. He's just not going to be doing the damage he needs to to get through this strong front line, especially this Leona. Yeah, as you say, it's a really good point that, uh, you know, a Zyra to be this defensive Speaks volumes as to the insight as to where the team is at right now, where their head's at, and what they're thinking as to their way back into this game. And there's no denying that Joby's been on one this game. He's been really bringing the pain to Fido, but it's these other lanes that are struggling. Just, it feels like they're just getting outclassed, simply. 
yeah, this is just the strength of this side. But Kali going for another gank, does have those two two boosts, so he's very fast. There is the ult from Tien, so he can, you know, escape this one if he really wants to blow that cooldown. He doesn't. He stands true and says, I have no flash. I can just literally ring the sirens. It's the center of police. We're on, we're out, and we're safe for the meantime. Fido flashing into a bush. Is that his demise? He gets the backup from the volley bear. He's got Schoenfei now hot in pursuit as well, but Jovi all in. Like an absolute madman, takes down the Tristana, looks for a second, and he gets himself the double. Inside all of that pain and pressure, he does eventually fall down to what is going to be a triple kill. No trips on it, it doesn't matter. That extra bit of magic resist I thought would have been a difference, but Schoenfire already so fed, has that first item completed, paired it up with the Dark Harvest, going to be able to find that kill on the Collie, so even though he does have a defensive item, in the inventory, it really doesn't matter. In Out of this Volley Bear build, as you mentioned, the Rod of Ages picked up first, the Flicker Blade looking like the second pick up thereafter, and then you've just got so much damage of all that CDR that you wonder, how do we shut this Volley Bear down at all? Forget that for a second, because that comes to Solar Flare. And his character just goes for a wide roam to see what he can find there. And no matter the, the bot lane state, Kurek just always looks so scary in Leona. He always is aggressive. I've never seen him play back or, you know, concede priority. He's always making sure he is going in. But, you know, the main scare point for Ground Zero, oh, for Eye on this game, is showing fire on this Karthus right now. I haven't seen him play this one the entire uh, split. You know, this is the nerf patch, right? Karthus did receive that Q nerf on 14-13. Shown fire mentioned how he did not really like the clear speed of this champion, but this is a champ who can completely take up the early game because he is the mage who was really aggressive and really strong in the early game. So this might be a better fit for Schoenfire in the uh, in these games because he can play the scaling mage who was really strong in the early game and can take over fights just like this one. Like you mentioned, also might be a sign that you don't need to ban me because I have so many different champions in my arsenal. All these AP mages, they're going to feel the same for me. But in goes Hexlash with that two-man Mega Storm combo beautifully with the three-man knockup from the Zyra. And surely this is what I've been hunting for all 12 minutes Sorry, long. Man. They've equaled the kills at 11 to 11, and they've taken down two in the process. That was a very strange look, Skinny. We, we normally see Ground Zero group up and be ready to engage or to deal with those engages, but it felt like that time they were completely caught off guard. They did get all six of the grubs, though, so that is the consultation prize for them. But the fact that they just got not even, like, caught out of uh, position by Hexplash there, but he walked up and engaged on them, found two crucial members and paired it up with the Phosphorus Bomb. Corky does so much damage in this early game. Gonna be able to get that Triforce on his recall. This is the first Dragon going over to that side as well, so a little bit of the, uh, you know, they're buying themselves some time to scale, deny the enemy getting that soul point, but we do go on the replay skimmy, and this is just the straight walk up from Hexplash into an engage. Wasn't even a flash coming out of him, so very surprising that this wasn't, you know, the usual ground zero we see. Yeah, it just felt a little bit too simple, to put it bluntly there, as, uh, well, that one also, I suppose, as uh, we come out of the replay. And Tien, yet again, has found himself amongst the headlines. That's kill number seven for the solo AP Carpus, and certainly a series for Schoenfire to mark his authority in that position. Yeah, absolutely, and that's going to be first tower going over to the end. Five plates picked up as well. Huge amount of money going to his pocket. He's going to be able to build towards those flicker plays that we keep talking, you know, about being this big item on the volley bear, or you know, maybe this is this is this is competitive, right, Skimmy? So maybe he's gonna go for a a more simple build, a more team fight focused frontline build. Might not see that really strong duelist build that is much more proficient in solo queue, but I'm really curious to see what he's gonna go for. Absolutely. I mean he has the most gold in the game, as uh, uh rather Shernfire, I should say, has the most gold in the game. And uh Jovi's still trying his absolute hardest to bring his team across the finishing line here. You can see in back-to-back -back games, set in second, really doing all his team can ask of him. But it's uh, that invitation to say, when do we feel strong enough to group up as five? Because as we went into that pause, it was the case of them lagging behind a full item into their counterparts of Ground Zero. And as the turret plates fall on down, it's a two and a half thousand gold lead in favor of Ground Zero. So certainly uh, a, 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 you know, a big margin, even by their standards, despite what their record standards have been during the regular season. It's, it's a case of, okay, what is Ion's next game plan? Is it, we need to contest this Herald? Because they completely forgot about it in game one, it felt. I think that Heralds is uh, its quite an overrated objective when the tower plays do fall down to me. It is nice to break open the mid tower though, you know, making the map more volatile for the enemy team and the fact they can't walk up so far mid lane is always nice, right? But overextending and forcing and losing side lane has never worked. But TP's coming out, Joby being aggressive on mid lane. Fighter TP's into mid wave on that ward, instantly jumps into Joby's head. Buster shots him into the team and acts like a mid lane Lee Sin. You absolutely love to see that one, but in we go then. Drop the curtain, go for the kill. Insta gets interrupted, there's only one shot getting fired there. But in comes TN, dropping the thunder, claiming one. 
and completely zoning the back line here of Ion. They can't stand up, they can't do the damage, and they can look at Lemus, but that's about it. Stick's doing so much damage here, you know, no one can really get onto him. He's just able to shoot and do all oh, so much from the back line here, but the main threat of Ion taking out straight away Skimmy Jerby didn't have Flash or Velcro because he was playing a bit too aggressive there. Really nice TP from Fido, but this is the disconnect that we talked about in the mid game, right? It's Joby being by himself on the mid wave where the rest of his team is in that river being aggressive and there's no one who can really back him up here whereas, you know, Ground Zero has that initial collapse first because they have control of the river and they find that pick onto that main member of Ion and from this point it is so hard to build, especially when that main engage is blown onto a carcass who is quite happy to die in these fights. Yeah, it certainly is to be the case, right? Nice stun to lock down the uh, Jin at the start of that one to make sure that he couldn't play a uh, complete cleanup crew. Here goes Joby that once again says, you know what, maybe my time to shine against okay. the bear. And he claims it. Also cops a Requiem and he just shrugs it off. Okay, beating them a little bit on the side lane. Never mind, hold my points, Gimme. We're going in mid lane. We are going in again. There is that killer instinct true to its name and its fashion. Gets the job done, takes out sticks for 20 seconds. And even with that lock, oh, it, no. it just did not prove to be enough. Fido now looking at the stragglers, looks at Coley and says the explosive bomb is ticking, but it's not enough. Giving a lot of respect to Joby there. If he did continue to chase in the fog of war and got hit by those roots, it's going to be a kill going into Joby. So got his two kills that he wanted, going to walk in, clear up that wave. So very nice by Fido. I think this is the fighter that we're really used to seeing, right? Not such an insane laner, not a you know a player who's known for taking over games from a laning base, but he's someone who is so good in team fights and is so good in the mid game. I think his positioning, uh, you know, his his prowess when it comes to the side lanes, when it comes to team fighting, is probably one of the best in the league right now. Seems that way, doesn't it? And uh, you know, long may it continue because it makes for a very entertaining match. That is for sure. You can already see and. Uh uh, much like we anticipated, right? There will be that flicker blade, so no need to try and adjust what would be a very solid Q style of gameplay when it works so well for them. <laughs> Nicely done in Munchern fight to snipe that one away as he works his way towards that second completed item in the Leandries. And that's a good talking point then to say that, uh, yeah, Lemus also matches the two item power. He's got the static, he's got the rage blade, and this Kaiser is absolutely an issue now. Yeah, and I would say the Ground Zero members are online. If not, the whole team is at their, you know, major power spikes you are seeing right now. Whereas, you know, Ion still need a mirror mana to come forward for that core. He still, still need him to the edge on the Jin. We are seeing the lock hit on the support this time, so it's really nice to be able to deal with the Karthus. Ult there's going to be coming out, but we're not seeing those major item spikes coming out, but we are seeing a teleport coming forward, Skimmy. Here's Dorymon with the flank. He does have the flash. He's looking for the flag. As they pounce on to Lemus, who holds his claims for just a second there, wondering if it needed to be used or not. They'll turn it around. And Duramon is that lamp to slaughter. He is the first one on the chopping block. Ooh. That's a disgusting strangle pawn. What is that knock up? All corralled into one big spot. And the Requiem to take at least one to the grave with them. And the fourth shot does land. Isn't going to do much damage just because you do not have that Infinity Edge in your inventory yet. But what an engage from Hexflash and Coley doing so much damage there. Fido staying around a bit too long. Almost Ooh. falls down there, but Lemus. Lemus says it's my time to shine. I really got zoned out from that fight from the get-go. Does he die as a result? No, the supercharges out. Jovi with the flash! And he claims it! And I tell you what, if you could already vote for a MVP, Shut. I mean, Jovi really is trying to do this all on his own. Shut down, Skimmy. Jovi is having, you know, I would say the series of his career so far in both these games, even though the first one was a loss, tried his best. And in the second game, doesn't have those power spikes yet, but he's doing so much. He's going to stay in this pit, try to finish his dragon off. No, no way. Oh my god, I saw 65 HP in my heart. Flooded oh, no. for a second, thinking there's no way Curex steals on the Leona. Inside <laughs> the bush they go. Fido says, you can jump. I can jump too. Surprise, surprise. Have your second dragon, but we'll take two instead. This is, yeah, once again, the classic Fido. Using his TP, finds those cleanup kills. Going to be able to get himself the Affinity Edge on that reset. Thanks to that now. But Mad Immune being completed for Jovi. We aren't seeing the rest of the two irons coming after the rest of his team yet. But they are winning these fights with nice engages, so... Dorimon does have the ult here. He certainly does, and he's going to have to use it because he needed HP. Comes in clutch at the very last second. Oh no, Fido, he's jumped in early. He does get the kill, but Hexflash is there, but Arel does literally zero damage. So what can he do but stand there and say, Team, where are you? And then not to be found, Telly. They are simply not there. And his team is absolutely nowhere to be found, Simi, because they are dead right now. So TP coming out of Jeremy does not have the flash. Going to walk right into a correct stun. 
Let's see then what Jovi can do. He buffers that one quite nicely on the Zenith Blade, not to connect him on that T. Features a fraction too early. Hexflash eventually dies. Schoenfire limps away in 25 HP. It's a crime. It's illegal. Fado has dashed the wrong way. Right into the firing lines of this cool kit. And now the Red Cream is there. Oh, he's <laughs> gone. gone. Oh, it was 8 HP, but the double burn items just too much to get past. I thought for sure he was going to live, but wow, so much damage coming out of this car this Gimme, and this item's being completed for his entire team. Even though these fights are looking pretty even, the gold lead is saying otherwise, as Tian taking down another tower in the mid lane, he's going to walk this one off as well. He's been a split pushing demon all series long though, hasn't he? If it's the Lee Sin, if it's the Volley Bear, you guys are fighting, I'm just simply winning the game by pushing out lanes and taking towers. And now, 20 minutes in, it's a 10k lead. And this is what Ground Zero is just so good at Skimmy. A lot of these fights are being traded evenly, right? But the Waves are always pushing for their team. They're always making sure the camps are dead before anything happens. Shonfire is always clearing camps, stealing away camps when other people show on the map. So there's just gold being taken already and nothing to really be denied when these fights happen. And this is the power of the Volleyball in the mid lane when he gets that initial oh stun. My powers up those auto attacks. He just has no cooldowns. Flash was burnt. Did you see it? Because I certainly did it the very last second. He flashed, he died in midair. The claws traveled through space and time. Oh, that feels like a crime to watch right there, but here we go again. I mean, it's a case of coming out of that replay. Six stacks in the Dark Seal, a Rabadons to rub salt Ooh. in the wounds. This Carfis is at true damage levels. Does not have the Requiem quite yet. It's going to be about 20 to 30 seconds for that one is off cooldown, and it's going to do absolutely criminal damage to the Ion side. They do have the Locket this time, so there's going to be some damage they can mitigate, but when this one does go on cooldown, expect to by the call and engage for Kurak right now. Let's see then where they draw their line in the sand as they get pushed further and further back towards their base to Ion. Their defensive line of vision really quite limited. That cheeky one by the Baron Pit itself, nicely found by observers. That to be denied as well. And they have to fight pretty it. much near on spawn. The Baron is being looked at. It's going to get taken. And what can Ion do to turn this one around? Nowhere near enough in range to make sure that a flip were to take place. Hex Flash engages, finds a two man lockdown with that Magnus on that will be the first one to fall on down as a result. They're going to turn their attention on Dejovi, and no matter how strong he is, he's the second casualty in this affair. It could just be a very clean ace at this point. Yes, they've lost Schoenfire, but it's just reset City. And 22 minutes in, it's an ace, and it's looking like the game is being rested to bed. And what an easy Baron take from Granzo. They recognize Cole is out of position, does not have a champion who can get to the pit easily without, you know, the gap close. Zyron, he has flash, got to steal that Baron, so easy pick up from them. Schoenfire falls down, is the main target for the team, but he has the record with him. He throws that one out and he half, he does pretty much the entire enemy's team health, or health bars, takes them out. And it's going to be an easy push for them to be able to take this game skinny. Incredibly quick way to close out this series in a best of three fashion. That will be the clean sweep 2-0 done on the day for Grand Zero as they continue this undefeated streak. And I'm sure the question for a lot of people is, will it ever run out? I think there was, you know, signs of weakness this game from Ground Zero, right? We saw that there was trade uh, kills being traded, them getting caught out of position in these fights. So obviously not an insanely clean performance that we have seen from them in a week past, but a very easy win for them and they were pretty much uncontested. They did not have to show any of their hidden cards yet and they're going to go into their next series with pretty much everything up their sleeve still. That they certainly do. Yes, there's a little bit of craziness from Tien to try and get himself uh, maybe a bit more entertained after spending an entire split of playing the same champions. But either way, 